Howdy folks, it's Barry here from My Virgin Kitchen, back in the Scoff Food Kitchen. Today's recipe is perfect for any leftovers you've got for Bubble and Squeak, named after it because that's the sound it makes in the pan when we cook it up. It's delicious and you're gonna absolutely love this and you must give it a go. So first thing you need to do guys is get yourself a big old frying pan, whack in some butter. We are just gonna use 25 grams of butter today, but you could use oil, but we wanna get some of that sort of nutty flavor out. So what we're gonna do is gonna start to melt any off the heat. We'll just start to push in. Uh, this is two rashes of bacon that I've chopped up. I'm adding bacon for a little bit of mm, and one large onion, okay? So just let it sort of warm up with the butter, push it all around, soften up the onions and cook through that bacon fully. You can hear it starting to sizzle already. Should take around about 10 minutes. Okay, folks, so that's been just under 10 minutes. You can see it's starting to get some real nice colour there, softened up, it's smelling gorgeous. You could add a little bit of sugar in there if you wanted to caramelise it, it's up to you. But anyhow, I've got a large mixing bowl here, and all I'm going to do is push this all into there. So in goes our cooked cabbage, straight in there like so. These are some carrots as well. So they're all nice and soft ingredients, really going to mush together, and that's the most important thing. And here is our mashed potato as well. In this goes, boom, like so. So what I'm just going to do is finish it off by giving it a good old seasoning. So some black pepper and a good old pinch of salt. I'm just going to use the spoon and start to whirl it together. We want to mush it together to start to form. The potatoes will actually help grab it. That's what the key thing is here. The potatoes are the main ingredient. So let's get it all nice and coated round. That butter really is making the difference in there as well. It's smelling awesome. So as you're mixing your mixture and you're finding if it's a little too wet, we're going to need to make our patties with floured hands anyway. But what you can do is add in flour, just like other cooking recipes as well, just to thicken it up, okay? So just stir it through gradually. And another good tip is once you've made your patties, if you can afford to wait, is just whack them in the fridge for about 10 minutes just to firm them up. But if you're in a rush, we can cook them straight away. So we've been mixing this through. The flour has really helped now hold it together. It's so important you do that. You don't want to put it in the pan and it's going to go like that. Okay, we want to make those nice patties. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab some more flour. You want to get it into your hands and we're going to sort of get a little bit messy here. So this is a chopping board here with some baking paper on there. We're going to grab a good old amount of it. You can see it's holding together, but using the flour initially just to coat it, roll it around and then we'll get it down on here. A little bit more flour on top. So what you want to try and do is get nice sort of burger shaped patties as well, relatively even in size as well, circular too, where you could make a giant one in the pan. I'm going to keep making them here and then we'll get them cooking. So I've finished shaping my three patties right now. They're looking good. And in fact, guys, the possibilities are endless what you can do. So if you do try this recipe, send us a picture at Scoff Food. Once you've got the patties there, use this pan here that should already still be quite warm. Grab some extra oil. Pour this in like so, we want to warm this up. Okay, so with our oil in the pan there, it's time to place in our patties. Here we go, I'm just going to sit one in there. I'm going to cook them in batches and that's how you should do it too. The oil is quite low at the moment, it should start to sizzle in a minute because you want to build it up gradually. Guys, it has been three minutes, it's time to flip them over. As you can see, we've got a nice golden colour on the bottom of them. Cook it again for another three minutes on that side, get it all warm through. So we've got some simmering water here. All we're going to do is give it a little stir to create a slight whirlpool in the pan. And we're going to just tip our egg in confidently like that. And it should find its way in the pan. Only a couple of minutes like that, let it join together and poach. Meanwhile, I've got a board here. What we're going to do is grab our bubble and squeak cakes and just stack them up in the middle like this. Somewhere for our egg to just sit on and we can finish it off with some black pepper, olive oil and freshly chopped coriander. So let's lift out our egg, just going to let it drip for a little bit. Obviously poached eggs are all shapes and sizes, you could go all stylish on it if you want. But I'm literally just going to push it straight on top. So we'll just drizzle a little olive oil on it, up and down like so, just to give a bit more moisture back into the bubble and squeak. A grind of pepper all over it. Finish with some freshly chopped coriander, as much or as little as you like. And when you want to cut into the egg, that yolk should pour all over it, and that will really complement the bubble and squeak. So there we go then, guys. It's looking fantastic. We really hope you give this recipe a go. I can't wait to taste this, and we'll see you next time.